Welcome to another episode of League to the Max, or whatever. I am your host, Brian Andesian Espinoza, and joined with me, as always, is the one and only Eric Squid Sports Head Watkins. How are you doing this evening, sir? Okay, remember when we said our little thing about, you know running things going on with the show and all of that as we were picking out the theme yeah well there might be another one. Oh boy so remember when we had our last little misadventure with twitter misadventure i don't remember any misadventures of course you don't remember because you weren't the one trying to figure out why Twitter was freaking out. I I barely use Twitter, okay? Like, let's be honest here. The fact that you convinced me to open up a dark Twitter is should be like a crowning achievement of 2021 for you. And have you not benefited from said dark Twitter? I don't, I have, I, it has not really been populated, to be honest with you. Oh, like there's some there's some folks that have I I have uh, migrated followings, if you will. Oh, I swear you have a because waste. I do not I I do not want to be as the kids say horny on main these days. I mean, it's not entirely a bad thing, but then again, as one woman described to me earlier today, I happen to have an elephant sized dick, so I guess somehow that works to my benefit. This is a, oh wait a minute we're not on life is like a game show you can say whatever the fuck you want <sighs> yeah but the misadventure of Twitter I'm like hey everything's set ready to go I push the button yada yada and then bam I'm getting an error message from uh, broadcasting live on Twitter again so we're not live on Twitter again is what you're telling me in this very long roundabout segment. Yes, yes, because this is, like I said, a running thing, since we mentioned running things and things you wanted to catch on air. No, 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 no. The way you did the theme thing off air, that was funny. This is just like, what? Well, huh? I didn't mean, well, I mean, granted, that was just impromptu off the cuff. I didn't mean for that to be funny. I don't mean for this to be funny, it but isn't. it is related. That's I, what I mean, saying. you're right. You're right. It's related. And you're also right. It's not funny. <laughs> what the hell, Twitter? Come on, Twitter. Get your shit together. Apparently, Twitter doesn't like League to the Max. They love soccer to the Max. No problem broadcasting that last night, which, by the way, will be up on YouTube and is available on your variety of streaming platforms of preference. A very, very interesting show last night, but that's not the point. Interesting. So, uh, what are we talking about this week? Oh, you have got to be shitting me. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ooh, I need to warn you. Ooh, you got to keep me on the rails. Talking about blah, blah, and yada, yada, yada. Well, and all well, this big news. Well, well, you're the one that had to fucking shit fit. When we went off the rails talking about uh, Adam or uh, yeah, Adam and upset a couple well, of weeks ago. Well, that's, so, be that's because it was a three and a half hour show, you jackass. <laughs> I mean, I mean, do you want? I mean, we could we can make we can, I could make a five hour show happen. No, no, I no. got stuff that just came across my Twitter feed that I haven't told you about yet. We can oh. very easily make this a very long show. Oh, God, what now? <laughs> what What now? As if, as if the description for the show wasn't packed enough. You got people being punished and fined. You got rosters being set. Yeah, you up. would. You would all. You would know all about people being uh, uh, being punished now. There, wouldn't you, over there, Mister Banana Cream Pie? Look, I don't know what you're talking about. My red bag of tricks has not seen any action in over a year. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I have been itching to use a mini flogger on a nice supple bit of flesh for quite some time, but oh no, opportunities do not abound in that regard. Ugh. Well, I can't, I can't really, I can't say anything to that effect either. I'm in the same boat. So see, you see, popping all that good shit. <laughs> But you're familiar with my situation, so... You're familiar with bits and pieces of mine, and what you're not familiar with, Harry, if you happen to be listening, which, why, I have no idea, but... if I wouldn't wanna... be su- I actually wouldn't be surprised if Harry was listening to us. Hi, Harry. Well, I don't know if he'd be necessarily listening to us right now. I mean, you know, Mondays, wrestling, yada yada. You never know. Hey, maybe he went, maybe he'll go, maybe he'll go back and watch us on YouTube, right? You know, this is the W2M network after all. You can find us online on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter, but apparently Twitter is fucking up. Yet unfucked up, A.A. Ron. See, see, Twitter, Jack Ramsey, you leave. Now Twitter starts to go to shit. This is your fault, Jack. Yep. It's your fault, Jack. Uh, Just like when Notch left Minecraft. (laughs) um now now would you like to continue with the plug because i'm sure there are folks out there who uh appreciate their podcasts in an oral persuasion and would love to know where they can find us well i mean honestly it's not the plug that i would like but it's the plug that we'll do for right now and yes for those of you who decide to take this podcast orally we are indeed available on a plethora, a cacophony of podcasting platforms. You've got Stitcher, Spreaker, Podbean, Castbox, Overcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Pods, Google Pods. If you name it, most likely we are on it. Most excellent. So we we I, I just alluded to us having a long show and, and interesting topics. Um, we will get to that topic in a moment, right? We're, we'll, we'll talk about the, the whole reckless thing. Cause I, I know we kind of went into this a little bit on last week's episode, but it's one of those things that's been living rent free in my head for the past week. Uh, and I saw some stuff on Saturday that really just added to, um, that, that kind of just added to my, my thoughts on that whole situation. So it's is this also related to what you just alluded to about stuff coming across your Twitter feed now? Oh no, 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 that has to deal with uh, Korean stuff. Um, I mean, we could sit here and, and spend two hours talking about Faker and you know Faker's history and you know the next uprising of Faker, but you know we'll save that for next week's show. Oh, Tabalnak, at least we're not running short on content, which is a good thing in a way. You know, I'm actually kind of surprised because off season, it's usually like you get front loaded to hell with all of the content about, you know, who's going where, right? And then that's it. It's dead. And usually there's all stars to fill the gap. But as we said last week, Riot pretty much said, we're not quarantining people for two weeks just so they can play for a weekend. It's not worth it, especially when we're footing the bill on hotels. We're canceling All-Stars. I mean, they didn't say that verbatim, but they pretty much, that's what they said in their announcement of uh, because of quarantine protocols and the fact that All-Star is literally just a single three-day weekend event. It's not worth it for the teams to you know, fly into wherever they're going to hold all stars, which was, I guess here in North America, question mark usually is. Um, so yeah, blame quarantine protocols for, uh, and international travel guidelines for uh, canceling all-star event. As long as they don't wind up canceling other trips that I am, quasi looking forward to for some very weird reasons then i'm okay are we still talking league here 
Remember when I said that thing of when I was going to say, hey, Harry, if you're listening or watching, yes, you have full permission to give Espinosa here the what for and what's going on behind the scenes. Yes, that bit. To ah. tie a nice little bow on to things. Ah. But, yeah. No, we're, we're, we're going to talk more about the whole Reckless. or uh, Wow, Reckless. I said Reckless, didn't I? The whole Jensen thing. We're going to talk about Reckless as well. Um, but first, I want to dive straight into um, the LCK news that came out yesterday. Right? Um, from Twitter. Uh, let me get the link here. Copy link. Da, da, da. Cause I'm sure if I found something from riot on this, it's going to be an all Korean and that doesn't help anybody. So. Yeah. While we may shill and do different things in many languages, Korean is not one of them. <coughs> but according to Riot, or at least according to this guy from Horizon Esports, um, Riot has uh, Penala has come up with a competitive ruling. That's what Riot calls these things. As I uh, do not, I, as I drink something that I will not chill for on air because they still refuse to give me a sponsorship. How'd you get We've talked about this. If I don't get my sponsorship, you don't either. Don't but get I'm... me started. Don't get me started on this Cerveza Mas Fina bullshit, okay? Look, I wasn't going to mention La Cerveza Mas Fina Actual in Los Estados Unidos. No, I wasn't. I was simply going to say that a very fine Chihuahua beer with the right lemonade makes a delicious shandy even when it's not summer mira mira no se tiene sorpresa cuando thursday i show up with some fucking corona okay hey i'll drink to that cerveza más fina tu en my con mierda Anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, Riot Korea has issued a competitive ruling against Kim Roach Kang Hee, which is the coach for T1 Challengers, uh, which is the academy team for T1, or the, the minor league team, as we've uh, alluded to in the past, um, going by that, that baseball system. Um, he's been penalized for one instance of player tampering. Uh, he's going to be fined 3 million Korean won, uh, which is a roughly equivalates to 2,500 us dollars. Uh, and he's going to be suspended for the first four games of the season. Um, it was, the ruling was carried out in accordance with LCK's penalty index and can be subjected to an appeal within 14 days. Um, scrolling down in that tweet thread, uh, Joe Marsh, uh, who is the CEO of T1, uh, has said that they are appealing the decision and they are hoping for a fair and equitable outcome after further review. So, uh, apparently, uh, if you, if you read the thread, it says here, uh, quote, Roach admitted that he directly contacted a player under contract with inquiries regarding the free agency without consulting with the player's team in advance. The LCK committee was able to confirm that Roach did this of his own volition and not per a request from his team. The penalty was decided after considerations of pieces of evidence that the conversation did not continue after receiving confirmation that the player's contract did not end and that there was no other motive behind the initial contact. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Like I said there, if we find the, uh, if we find the bloody. Good God, that's a lot of, okay. 
Yeah, no, we have the uh, we have the the actual competitive ruling from LOL Esports site, but uh, as expected, uh, only because he's not going to shut up until I put it up on screen. Yeah, if anybody knows Korean, you're welcome well, if you, to read. If, this. if you have if you have Google Chrome, you can trans. It, there is a translate option, uh, which I'm going through right now. Yeah, but the um, translation is probably crap. Actually, no, the translation actually looks pretty freaking good. Well, why is the hell? Why is the translate not coming up on my end? Uh, right click anywhere on the page, and then the, you should see a thing that says translate to English. Ah, they moved it. No, it also shows up there in the address bar, but sometimes it doesn't auto detect properly. The website is default English, not default another ang language. So you have to do the manual translate. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the LCK secretary. The secretariat. Yes. Uh, 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 Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised that they don't say uh who it, it what player it was that was um quote unquote poached. Well, what's the word on the street saying about that? Ah, I the only the only thing I heard about that was that tweet that we pulled up. I haven't seen too much outside of that, so Yes, and they go through blah blah blah. Yeah, this is the one thing I do like about Riot when they issue these competitive uh, rulings is they go in depth on them. Like even if it's like a short little thing, they say, "Okay, these were the rules that the person violated." And oh, there's another. There's actually a second part to the uh, this competitive uh, thing. Uh, Gen G violated LCK rules by making an official recruitment announcement before league approval, and they are being fined one million one. So yeah, a million wall. You're looking at a little over. 800 bucks <clears throat> signing of four players who were not approved oh hmm. they yeah they effectively announced their roster before the dot the eyes were dotted and the t's were crossed gotcha yeah Yeah, something like that. You got to be sure to dot every comma. Yep. So. That's uh, that's our that's our lead off, right? Our, our lead off story. Um, our next story uh, we have from the LEC Wulu. Uh, it appears that all of the teams have finalized their rosters. I'm sorry, the what? Don't ask. <laughs> I don't get it either. Uh, a, a guy named himself uh, uh, based on a Pokemon, I guess for anonymity's sake. Um, he's spawned copycats like crazy, but apparently this person has sources deep everywhere. Um, or is otherwise very good at finessing people for information uh, and leaks a lot of stuff. My brain just went in five different directions, and it's a bad idea if I explain any of them. So we're just going to move right on. <laughs> do I, do I want to know at all? Um, some of them are typical me. Some of them would get us flagged on YouTube. So I better not. 
good choice. <laughs> so, um, excuse me for a moment. My home phone is ringing. So, yeah, uh, I, I'm not the only one with any potential phone issues. So we're going to go here. I'm going to try to zoom this in and see if I can get this enlarged for those of you who happen to be watching or who will be watching. These are the speculated rosters. Oh, okay, so 100 these, Cloud9, some of this we suspected. So we've, we've got some big names. However, and this is kind of going to be a very good segue into Brian's rant here. Because this is going to tie into a couple of stories. Not just for the state of the teams themselves. You're pretty much finalized rosters. But more importantly, some big time names who were missing from this particular document if indeed all holds well and true which again some guy who names himself wulu no no, no. I, I guarantee you these are true sorry that was a certain other disembodied uh person or wannabe disembodied person uh trying to let me know that they are on their way home he couldn't have texted you uh he always calls that's that's a thing. It's just a thing. Because he usually does it when he's already, like, in the car, like, already out of the parking lot. Of course. But anyways, um, yeah, so looking at these rosters, right, um... TSM did indeed announce the last uh, their last players this week. Um, so this is pretty much going to be the final rosters for all of these teams going into spring. I think it is safe to say the preseason is over for um, for the uh, for the for the pre for the spring split, right? Um, stacked rosters. I think it goes without saying. Uh, that the team liquid <laughs> probably, I don't even want to say probably team liquid does have the most stacked roster in the league. Um, I will, I, I here's, here's my take with team liquid, right? And I don't, I'm, I, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. Cause this is our, our main topic tonight. Um, which I'm getting to in a few moments here. I, I have a couple of other things we do want to cover first. Um, but I'm not exactly a Team Liquid fan right now. Um, with with what they did with this, well, mainly because of what they did with this roster, right? Um, I don't like them taking Bjergsen over Jensen. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, actually, we might as well just get into it a little bit more now. Um, Bjergsen has, hasn't played in a year, right? He coached for, I believe it was either a full year or at least a split. Um, but he hasn't played professional league of legends since 2019. On top of that, right, if you go back and you look at Bjergsen internationally and, you know, well, what does the international have to do with anything? Every team's goal is to perform internationally, right? You want to build the best team possible. You want to go to Worlds. You want to win the championship, right? That's that's the whole point of competitive League of Legends. You want the world championship, right? You, you, you don't want to put... If you're a bottom feeding team, maybe you put together a team where you're like, okay, we can go to playoffs. Maybe, you know, if we want to use football terms, maybe we can win an AFC, uh, you know, championship. Like we can, maybe we can win a divisional championship, right? 
But no, no, no. TSM. Well, please is... don't get me started about that because that just brings back too many bad memories. Is this where I throw in a jab about how your dolphins are doing? Oh, the dolphins are at least doing decent. But have you seen headlines about the Jaguars? Oh, believe me, when the kickoff comes back, hopefully at the end of the regular season before Wild Card Weekend, we'll have a lot to talk about. Yeah, make sure you mention the Jets for me because they're uh, what did what did I read earlier? Thirteen season drought now. Yes. Without making it to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. W trust us. We will definitely mention the Jets. And again, if we happen to come back at that time, you can go ahead and join right in on Twitch or Facebook Live. Twitter probably, since it tends to act right for the kickoff. So you'll be able to give your comments. You won't be the only Jets fan. Oh, I know that. I know somebody else said it would will soon to be sitting across the desk from me who will uh, have some things to say about that as well. Oh, and there will be three of you. My God, you're multiplying. But back to back back to what I was saying. Right, as a team, you want to put together the best team possible to perform at the highest levels possible and take home the number one prize. Right. For League of Legends, that is Worlds, right? And to do that, you have to play against other regions. Plain and simple. We know how this works. When you look at Bergson versus when you look at Jensen, statistically, Jensen is the better player, right? I have said, and I continue to stand by the contention, that Jensen is the top is top two mid laners in North America, right? The only person that I put him up against, ironically, for the sake, I mean, we are talking about it, but it, it is Bjergsen, right? Bjergsen is an incredibly talented player, and he is he is a ridiculously good mid laner, right? The problem is Bjergsen does not perform internationally. Right. And TSM does not perform internationally. Right. In fact, I believe TSM is the losingest North American team internationally. I may be wrong about this, but I'm thinking just like, you know, gut off the gut check off the top of my head here. I'm pretty sure. For as consistent as TSM can make international tournaments, they are the losingest NA team when they are at international tournaments. That's something we can do would dive into the statistics and check up on and confirm. Because because let's not forget, what was it? Last year they went 0-6 in the fastest amount of time possible. And then the year before that, I think they were one in five. Good God. In group stage. Yeah, no, TSM does not perform internationally, plain and simple. The best years they were at internationally were when they had double lift on the team. And that's frankly because double lift was carrying their asses. And that's a more or less accepted fact. It's disputable, but it's more or less accepted as fact. So that brings us to the golden question, right? Why sack what I'm pretty sure we can say is the best performing international mid laner for the worst performing international mid laner? Because at this point, you're talking about the two best mid mids in North America, right? Domestic success. Arguably, they're equal, right? I'm pretty sure if you want to start talking about who's got more trophies and more titles and all that, somebody's going to, one of the two of them is going to come out on top, and I'm pretty sure it's Jensen. His team Liquid has taken it, I think they did like four time back to back or something like that, uh, trophies. So, 
Jensen it performs can yeah I, I mean he's no faker right like you know he you can't put the entire team on his back and expect him to carry but he's consistent right whether that's consistent good or consistent bad that's debatable but at least he's consistent and it's not entirely shit the bed So I have to sit here and 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 wonder why does Team Liquid bench Jensen, who just last year, mind you, paid a two-year four point three million dollar contract extension on for Bergson. God, I am in the wrong line of work. Who decided to come out of retirement from being a coach. Uh, Even though he's not calling it coming out of retirement. He is transitioning back to being a player. Because he never officially he retired. He just transitioned to being a coach. Look, let's call a spade a spade here, okay? You retired, and then you became a coach, and then you decided you didn't want to be a coach, and it wasn't working out for you. So now you're becoming a player again. That's pretty legit. Um, But it absolutely baffles me, right? Like, what value... Like, I I honestly want to know, right? Like, what value does Team Liquid think that they are getting by taking Bergson over Jensen? Uh Uh-oh. That's, that's... (laughs) You're the freaking Tim Tebow. Thank you, Jonathan. You're the freaking Tim Tebow of League, and I'm a gator saying this. Yeah. Um, bang bang shots fired. God, as if I didn't have enough problem with old <laughs> gators around these parts. Ugh. But, but like I said, I, I'm I, I struggle to find the value in this decision, right? And I don't think I'm the only one either. There's a lot of people who are not very happy about the fact that Jensen just got honestly unceremoniously tossed to in the trash in this whole situation and i i i'm baffled right like don't get me wrong as far as as far as north america goes this this team is stacked right and i don't know maybe maybe t and i i said this on i've said this on twitter as well recently maybe team liquid decided to play some weird long con game where they pick up Bergson, they sit on jensen's buyout for so long where once all the teams lock their rosters they pay him his his buyout or contract termination or they give him his severance pay and completely kick him off and there's no likelihood that he goes and plays for anybody else even though he no longer has a buyout right mm-hmm. so team liquid now doesn't have to compete against a team that's fielding a mid laner who is quite frankly at least looking at all of the mid laners that we have in the league right now, based on, you know, all 10 of these rosters or nine, uh, not really competition to Bjergsen. The weird long con. Yeah. Why do it? I don't know. Because they can. I, I At this point. Yeah. But it seems I, let me put the. Uh, this seems like a Reginald kind of thing to do, not a Steve kind of thing to do, right? Like Steve, the Steve Steve Arkinet, the owner of, of of Team Liquid. Steve's a good guy, right? Like you know, we got the paid by Steve memes. He's there. He's with the memes and all that. Like Steve has been good to his team and good to his players. This kind of shenanigans, and, and yeah, I'm going to call it shenanigans because I, I can't think of a better word for it 
And if I can think of a better word for it, what's the other place all stuff in the walls? It's probably not a good idea that I call it that. And we're going to ignore that background commentary. You can't even get the quote right. He can't hear you, but unless he's got headphones on over there. Um, no. Nope. Yeah. Well, for all of those out there who can hear me, he didn't even get the quote right. Hey, Farva. Hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like? You know, the one with all the goofy shit on the walls. And the mozzarella sticks. And the mozzarella sticks. <clears throat> oh, you mean shenanigans? Oh, put those away. Sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, a, it's an epic movie. I, I don't... Super Troopers quotes are always welcomed on this podcast. Yeah, I was just surprised when I found out that they made a sequel. You haven't seen the sequel? I have seen the sequel. I ran across it by chance a couple months ago on IFC. I was like, really? Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I The sequel was good, but it there's no way it, it lived up to the original. And right? this is my point. It's like, you had a good thing, Broken Lizard. You were great. Just, no, you didn't have to dig into that well again. They wanted to, because everybody was like, we want a Super Troopers 2. But the problem is, I think it had bad script writing. But we can we can save that for a whatever segment another time. Um, hell, we can talk about that next week for all I care, on our last episode of the year. Um, Speaking of last episodes of the year, you, you know it'll be a Thursday and whatnot before you know it. A everything going good on that front. Uh, we'll have stuff done. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't like that look on your face. <laughs> I don't, don't like that look on your face. <laughs> you, you don't like my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 you're right to not like that look on your face. <laughs> okay, anyway so yeah like i said um this is the kind of shenanigans that i expect out of reginald and tsm right this is not the kind of shenanigans i expect out of team liquid and again it just it absolutely baffles me right that they were willing to give up Jensen, who they just re-signed last again, they just re-signed Jensen last year to I want I believe it, the exact number is four point three million, but I know it's at least a four million dollar contract, a two year four million dollar contract. And this happens, and now Jensen is not likely to play at all. I, as a matter of fact, I guarantee you he doesn't he he won't play in spring, and it's highly unlikely that he plays in summer. I think the only way, right, that Jensen plays in summer is if one of these other mid laners shits the bed so bad. Oh badly. He shits the bed so bad. That they're willing to shoot him with a blank. This is why I have fear. This is why I have fear. Yeah, trust me, I'm going to need some alcohol soon, too. Uh. But, no. Um... I think if 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 one of these teams has a mid laner that shits the bed so bad uh, that they that they think that the only way they compete in summer is if they they bring in a ringer like Jensen, then we'll see him play. Right. And honestly, when you go back and you look at the rosters, if you want to pull the put the rosters back up on, on screen here, not that we really need to, but. I uh, think the, for illustrative purposes. 
I, I, I think the only team, right? The only, the, I, I see two teams that have a possibility <coughs> of their mid laner shitting the bed that badly. We've talked about one of them before already. Do you remember who? No. Does what could have been ring a bell? Whoa, you really think no? He's, no, fudge. But he's role swapped. Okay, he's not a mid. Point. He's not a mid laner, and he's already admitted he does not know how to play mid. Oh. He's he's currently spending the off season right now. If I remember correctly, they just got back from boot camping in Korea. Like, he does not know mid, right? And if he shits the bed bad enough in a spring split, there is a very good possibility that C9 shuffles up the roster and we see Jensen return to his roots where he started at, at Cloud9, which is great because I can break out all of my 2015 Jensen Cloud9 memes again. But then who would they get rid of? Uh, my guess is probably Summit. Okay. They'll send Fudge back top. I don't think they put Fudge in the jungle. Like he can play both, right? But at, at in in his natural state, like his his primary original role is top. So I think they get rid of Summit. They probably send Summit to the academy team, or you know, like the 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 double A's, right? I think I got that reference right. Yeah, double A, triple A. It's about that level. Yeah. Well, you got the majors, the minors, and then whatever the hell is under the minors, which is what, double A, right? Well, actually, the minors are all encompassing because you have triple A, double A, single A. I feel like we go through this like every three weeks or something. Well, that's because I can it, never I can never remember this. Well, that's because they actually just changed it in baseball a couple of years ago. Triple A, double A, high A, low A, and rookie. In hockey, though, it's different. Triple A, double A, single A. Yeah, so basically they send him, they, they would either send him to the double A or the single A team. Because I believe Cloud9 does have a single A team. Oof, oof. Because I doubt they release Summit out of his contract because I'm I'm pretty sure they're paying him a good penny for moving him from Korea. Yeah, but not even to, like, what, something at a AAA level even? Because well, that's a I mean, down. Isn't, wouldn't Cloud9 be the AAA team? No, Cloud9 would be the major team. Oh, well, then in that case, they, they're putting him below <laughs> the academy team. Right, because there's usually there's the main team, there's an academy team or two, and then a rookie team. Oh, and so that is a drop down. Yeah, and I don't think they're gonna have enough room on their roster to house him in the academy team. So they probably have to put him on the rookie team if they want to keep him, or at least ride him until, uh you know, postseason where they can, if he's not on a one-year contract, see if they can, you know, get somebody to buy him out. Or him and Fudge take turns starting top lane, but they're already doing that in bot lane with their support. So I don't know how that's going to work out. But it's, either, uh, but also, but also TSM, I have not heard of this this guy they've got in their support in, as their new support. I believe he's a call up from their academy team. I'm not even. I'm not sure. I'm gonna actually look him up real. See if I can look him up real quick. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, Chinese player, 20 years old, 
Uh, do, do, do. Team history. Uh, this year, he came over from a Chinese team called Thunder Talk Gaming. Do, do, do. Thunder Talk Gaming. Look, it's China. What do you expect? They... Yeah, but even, but even still, that sounds like that's a basketball team in the Philippines, not a team like that in China. Um, it's a development. It's it's the minors. It's they're they're a minor league team in China, League of Legends Development League. They're in the LDL. So, effectively rookie. Chinese rookie. Yeah, that because yeah. he played. He played one. He played one season in a development league on a development team, and now he's effectively debuting on a North American team. I was right. I, I don't know crap about this guy, which again makes me think if this kid shits the bed, TSM might want to pull some emergency shit out of their ass and be like, we need somebody better. And if Reginald is still at the helm and if, you know, Reginald's past management decisions, we'll put it that way, um, hold true then we will uh, we will definitely see them do something like that. Now, the question becomes, does Jensen go to TSM, right? Mm -hmm. If he does, I think it's the biggest, like, irony ever in the history of League, right? Mm -hmm. They steal, t uh, uh, Liquid steals Jensen, or sorry, Liquid steals Bjergsen from TSM, only for their previous mid laner to go play for TSM. If that isn't the definition of irony, then I don't know what the hell is. I mean, irony is the universe's sense of humor. But with the image problems that TSM has been facing and, you know, the known issues of Reginald's management style if we want to call it that, right? Mm -hmm. Would Jensen be willing to go to TSM? Becomes the ultimate question. I don't know. I think if Jensen is petty about it, maybe he does, you know, but Jensen's never been a petty person. He's been quiet. He's been reserved. He doesn't really have that much of an ego or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think he's motivated, you know, he's not a double lift, right? He's not right. like, I'm going to go shit on these guys and I'm going to do it by going to the team that caused me to lose my job in the first place. I think if he gets a reasonable offer from a team, he'll go. But I don't know if it's going to be TSM, right? I honestly think he goes to Cloud9 before he goes to TSM, especially if both Fudge and Kie Duo, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm, I'm sure somebody will correct me. Um, as always, if you want to send your editorial corrections, you can do that at DNDesian on Twitter. You can send your hate mail about all of my hot takes to s.garmer at gmail.com. Yes, and the fact that, that we are going to head and we decided we weren't going to necessarily do it last week because of reasons. But now this week, since he's feeling better, yes, the hate mail may resume. Kedwo? Kedwo. Kiaidwo? One of those two. I'm thinking Chinese, it might be Kaidwo. 
that sounds about right. I don't know. I have somebody I can ask about this, and they will be consulted. <laughs> so, you're pulling the old phone a friend from Taiwan, I see. <laughs> you shut your ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Awkward! Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right. Anyway, yeah. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. No. Um, I think right, and I don't mean any disrespect to Fudge, but I, I don't, I don't think he, I don't, I don't know if he's going to perform very well in the mid lane, right? Like, I don't want to call this a rebuilding split for Cloud Nine, right? Because you know how we have the rebuilding seasons in football and pretty much any right. other traditional sport. Right. We haven't really seen that in League of Legends yet, but I think this might be the first legitimate rebuilding split we see, and it'll be Cloud9. Because Fudge is just, he's got to get this experience from somewhere, and really the only way to get that kind of experience is against other pros, right? Mm -hmm. And I just don't know if this C9 roster is stacked enough to carry fudges potential deficiencies and i say this as a very ardent longtime cloud nine fan right mm -hmm. like i am an equal opportunity offender when it comes to talking about teams right just because i'm a fan of a team doesn't mean i'm gonna let them off the hook easy this is true <coughs> But I, like I said, I don't know if this Cloud Nine roster is strong enough to carry potential a potential deficiency from Fudge. Are the first few weeks of this season going to be rough for Cloud Nine? Oh yeah, I guarantee it. Because they're they're going to be fighting communication. I guarantee you, they're still going to be fighting communication issues. You know they've got they've got LS they've got a, you know Ella the, the the players have to get used to LS they have to get used to each other. Um, the Fudge has got to get used to his new role, right? Like it's just there are too many variables here that and not enough constants mm -hmm. where the equation as, as as you being a mathematician would understand this gets more difficult to solve. This is true. This is true. You 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 have way too many variables in this equation and not enough constants, which makes this just infinitely more challenging to solve for X. And right now, X is the spring championship, right? Because we want to see one of these one of these top stack teams win so they go to MSI right cuz don't forget we have MSI you know to deal with that's our 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 mid-year international tournament which does affect worlds right it does affect seeding and all that mm -hmm. um the winner of 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 MSI gets a guaranteed seed into worlds not the team themselves but their region right So I'm I, I'm skeptical about the Cloud Nine roster. I'm also skeptical about the Team Liquid roster. Um, because as we've said, or as I as I mentioned briefly last week as well, this roster is not exactly filled. Like I look at all of these guys, right? And the only definitive shot caller that I can see on this team is Core JJ, right? The rest of these guys, and really just this entire this entire Team Liquid roster in general, these are not take guys, right? Like in any sport, there's give and take, right? Like you 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 have guys that you know they know that they need to take resources, and they have guys that are there 
that they know that they either have to give resources or they're they're exclusively there to set up the giving of resources, right? Mm -hmm. This roster doesn't exactly have any take personalities, if you will, right? There's none of these guys are like, give me this, give me that. I want this. I will carry. These are all... I don't want to say passive players, but they're definitely they're they're not like they're 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 willing to work as a team. But the problem that I'm seeing with the with the roster is because we see this all the time in professional pro play. If you play too passively, you fall behind and you lose, right? Like mm-hmm. you cannot win League of Legends by playing passively. You have to play aggressively. You have to have a definitive, you know, shot caller and and you know, point of carry, so to speak. Like, yes, it is a team game, but at the end of the day, somebody has to make the the the, the fucking decisions, right? You're right. And I don't see any of these five names that particularly stand out as a player that has the necessary personality or gameplay style to say, okay, give me this. I'm doing this. We're focusing around me. We're rallying around me. Let's do this. These are all setup players. They are not definitive action carry players right and that's that concerns me about the team liquid roster like you have Bjergsen who's who's hasn't played professionally in a year I mean we've seen him stream we've seen some of his results out of Korea boot camp does the numbers on paper look good, right? The numbers on paper say he still got it more or less. Uh, there's some champions that he still needs to, you know, pick up the mechanics on and learn a bit, but generally speaking, Bjergsen still got it. But will he have it on the actual professional stage, right? Cause we've also said it's one thing to play in solo queue, whether that's here in North America or in Korea. Uh-huh. But it's another thing to play on stage, especially given the fact that right now, as it stands, it looks like we're going to have crowds in LCS next year. I haven't seen anything saying that they aren't continuing to ban crowds out. And the more and more I see stuff, the more and more it looks like we are getting crowds back in the studio for 2022. Now, if this Omicron thing persists, maybe it'll get delayed a couple of weeks. But I guarantee you, by the end of spring, we will see crowds back in the studio, right? That's probably going to be like everywhere else where it's just masks are required, vaccination status required. But I think Riot is, is realizing they've got to get the crowds back in the studio. Because Riot, I guarantee you, is losing money on not having crowds in the studio, especially when a lot of other major sports have already gone back to crowds in either a limited capacity or full capacity. Yeah, you're not wrong. And knowing with Riot and what they're doing, of course, they're going to look after the money, which is actually, if they can indeed go ahead and manage crowds, Thanks to even with the mispronounced variant that you mentioned. Omicron, Omnicron, I don't fucking know, man. It's another fucking variant, okay? Where's where's the time variance authority to come in and shut all these fucking Lokis down? Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, that, that reference is a few months out of date. Um, yeah, uh, aside from all of that, yes, crowds would definitely be a good thing really on both ends. And for those of you who are Futurama fans, I'm sure you're laughing at all of the different pronunciations. It's 
Omicron, as in Omicron per CI8. I am Lur, ruler of the planet Omicron per CI8. There we go. There's the reference. He better not be talking about references. I know he is not talking about references. He's he's talking about references. He's definitely talking about references. But anyways, yeah. Um, but this gets me into into our next thing, right? Um, and we'll we'll come back. I want we're, we're, you know I'm not done talking about uh, Jensen yet, but. We do have a little bit of news uh, for anybody who's been following LEC. Um, at the moment, I missed this one. You mi oh. In other words, you can't win a football game by punting every possession away. I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, you got to have you got to have somebody who uh, you got to have a quarterback. And there's no quarterback on Team Liquid. At least I don't think there's a quarterback on Team Liquid. They're all wide receivers. But uh, our next tweet is going up on screen. Uh, we have we have Cadrill, uh, which, by the way, congratulations to Cadrill. Uh, he won eSports Analyst of the Year to, uh, over at the uh, eSports Awards last month. Um, he long story short, he's been, he, he threw out some tweets. Um, apparently he wanted to explore coaching, uh, or the possibility of coaching. Um, there was some, uh, whatchamacallit, there were some rumors that went around that said that, that, that there was a possibility that he may go to Vitality. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't know how, if, how accurate those were or if they were, you know, even like anywhere near accurate, like if they were even true or not. Um, but he comes, he, he turned around and, uh, threw that tweet out um that said that he wanted to stay as a caster uh and then last week between uh you know uh, over the week last thursday uh he tweeted well this didn't age well and there's uh, quite a few other lec talent as well um shocks being a big one um kind of confirming without confirming that Cadrill may not be returning to the LEC broadcast for spring, which is just fucking dumb. Yes, I said it. This is again, th th uh, let's, you know, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but this is again Jensen versus Bjergsen, right? Like you have a guy who I, I I said this in one of my one of my Discord servers that I hang out in, right? Cadrill is the European version of Captain Flowers. He is universally loved by anyone by by anyone by everyone in the league scene is ridiculously stupidly good at what he does and continues to find ways to make his content engaging and fun without going overboard or being cringe, right? Because we've seen some of these casters try to get on the meme bandwagon and just it's cringe. It's very cringy, right? I'm, I'm sure you could probably attest to that in regular sports. Oh, yeah. They, John um, Madden, John Madden, John Madden, John Madden. Well, I was going to say Troy Aikman, but yeah. We're, we're, we're ignoring the peanut gallery, remember? Yeah, Troy Aikman. 
Oh, the memes about Troy Aikman. But, again, this is another one of those what the fuck are you doing LEC? I don't understand the value in this, right? Um, at the moment, at least this is, this is, seems to be the predominant take on, on social media. I don't know how true it is, but I would guess it to be fairly accurate is riot knows or knew at the time that Cadrill was either in talks with or wanted to go to a coaching position, right? Was actively looking for it. It seems that the coaching position fell through somehow. Um, it's a possibility and knowing Cadrill very likely that that probably had something to do with content streaming rights, right? Like what he's allowed to stream when he's allowed to stream. Cause Cadrill has a pretty big following and brand, so to speak on Twitch. Um, that fell through. And when riot found out that that fell through and he puts this tweet out there, riots like, okay, he doesn't have a fallback plan anymore. We can lowball his contract. Um, and probably get him to pick up for cheap, but Cadrill may be thinking either him or his agent or a combination thereof, um, that the offer that Riot lowball or the, that offered him, Riot offered him was too low and he doesn't want to take it, right? Mm -hmm. There's also a possibility, although I think this one is a little bit less likely given Cadrill's popularity um, that Riot intentionally lowballed him in a in an effort to intentionally not bring him back to the uh, to the LEC right because we saw them do that with Frost Kieran, uh notably um, after she fucked up a major riot deal a year or two back. Um, yeah, don't piss off the Saudi Arabian government. Oh, no, 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 no. That's effectively what she did, and she's pretty much i believe been blackballed out of league persona non grata yeah um the last time i seen her do anything affiliated to league was the arcane event where she was hosting on twitch's channel uh for the uh, for twitch's coverage of the event like i don't believe she's she yeah like you said i'm pretty sure she's persona non grata at riot which is good, honestly, because I never really liked her. And before you start sending your hate mail to s.garmer at gmail.com, it has nothing to do with the whole, you know, feminism bullshit, because that, you know, those white knights will show up. I just think that she had ridiculously high and unnecessary amounts of personal caster bias in her commentary and she just regurgitated whatever really crappy hot take bad hot take at that uh that was going out at the moment to try to give her some credibility it just overall i i didn't like her like she just she rubbed the wrong way the too much bias, too much regurgitation of bad hot takes. And it's pretty easy to rub the wrong way. No. No. I wasn't going to give myself a, <coughs> a monkey for that one, but I mean, hell, if it's low-hanging fruit, I'll pluck it. Again, 
Uh, you can send your hate mail to s.garver at gmail.com or at Squid Sportshead <laughs> on Twitter. I'm not responsible for this. But 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 before you go flaming, he's new to league. He doesn't know who Frost is. Um but yeah, I think think cage I, I either way it's uh, i'm i'm willing to stake very good claim on the fact that this is a contract issue right because i'm i'm like 95 percent willing to bet that lec has offered him a contract i'm pretty sure it's probably a money problem mm-hmm If we don't get Cadrill in in the spring split for LEC, viewership is going to tank, right? Like a lot of people are saying, look, Cadrill is one of the few reasons why I'm watching LEC. Like he's good. Um, which in related news, apparently Quick Shot is coming back into the picture. Um, Quick Shot has to be hands down my favorite like you make a list of like my top three casters of all time that's a tough list to put together right um but i can tell you out of those top three captain flowers and quick shot are on that list like every time that third spot it's tough right like I've I've I'm a huge fan of Rivington the third. Um, I'm a little sad. I mean, good for him, but I'm a little sad that he's decided to move on to other uh, games, mo uh, most notably Valorant, which is Riot's FPS title. Um, I think he's he did some stuff for Wild Rift, which is the League of Legends mobile game, effectively. Um. Monte Cristo is also on that list. Um, again, you can you can send your hate mail to s.garber at gmail.com because I know a lot of people are probably going to flat give me flack for Monty, for having Monty on that list. But honestly, Monty was a great caster. He made some dumb, stupid ass decisions when it came to Renegades, right? Like that was just that whole you know team ownership fiasco. He made some bad decisions and he got in bed with the wrong people. But as a casting talent, Monty is amazing, right? Especially you get the the the, the Monty Doa duo. They were good in league. They went over to Overwatch. They were pretty good at Overwatch from what I've been told. I haven't watched professional Overwatch. I'm sorry, I don't care for Overwatch. You can flame me directly on Twitter for that. I'll take that flame. I don't care. At the Andesian. Um, but yeah, no, there's 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 a few people I could put in that uh uh Cadrill included. Um and yeah, for that third spot, it's like Rivington, Cadrill, uh Monty and Papa Smithy are are like they they all have equal fighting rights for that third spot. Um, but I'm glad oh. to see the quick shot is coming back. Oh boy! Oh no! Does that mean I underwatch Overwatch? <laughs> Give him the monkey. Since he insists. At least he didn't yell it out. But yes, quick shot is coming back. I'm very happy. Um, maybe that will help drive LEC viewership. Because uh, if they're losing Cadrill, they're going to need it. Um, they're also losing Reckless. Uh, as we know, Reckless went to the French League of Legends double A team. 
or triple A team, depending on how we're doing this again. It's it it, it is not the LEC. It's like it's not a academy team, but it's not like the premier pro team or the premier pro league. So, you know, take that as you will, basically. Um, but yeah, they lost reckless. So that's going to cause viewership numbers to go down a bit as well. All the reckless fans are, are not going to tune in and there. There's, there's a lot of reckless fans out there. Um, viewership for LEC, not looking very good right now with some of the decisions, uh, that are, that are being made over there. Right. Um, and, and speaking of, of viewership and changes being made and things like that, um, you know, I wish the best for Cadrill. I, I, I don't think this is, this whole situation is going to last long. Right. Um, fortunately Cadrill's in a really good spot. He has an amazing brand, uh, built up on Twitch. He can definitely support himself through streaming if it comes down to it. I think he's trying to negotiate for co-streaming rights um, to, to various LEC games or Riot events or you know, whatever the case may be. Um, I doubt he's going to get them because if he does, he that's 100% going to steal viewership from the LEC. But who, who knows, right? Like this is still a developing thing. I mean, Shock said in a in a video, uh, in a clip that was captured off of her stream recently, uh, last year she wasn't re-signed to the LEC until the day before the season started. Cutting it mighty close there. Yeah, and Shocks is a like Shocks is a staple of the LEC, right? She, she's one of the OGs. Like Shocks is the the analyst desk, right? Like the, when, when she announced that she was leaving, right. To go to freelancing and she was kind of doing the whole part-time season thing. Like there was a, a literal riot. I will not take a monkey. That was just way too low hanging fruit. I am the kind who will give monkeys for low hanging fruit though. That was just too obvious though. Eh, fair. Um, But yeah, she she admitted that she got signed the day before the season started. So this isn't this the Cadrill mess isn't over quite yet. I I, I think things are going to work out. I think we're going to see an announcement out of him that he's working for the LEC because the riot is just too dumb to not do it right. Because if the if if LEC doesn't do it, then I would not be surprised one bit if the LCS offers Cadrill a job and he takes it. And I can just, I can imagine it now, right? Like if you put Cadrill next to Captain Flowers, oh man, do you want to talk about like popular cast? Like that's the, that is like, that'll be this generation's Monty and Doa. Like just flat out. Like I, 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 I would have a hard time naming a more iconic duo than those two casting than 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 Flowers and Cadrel casting together. Like L LCS will drive up its viewership numbers so crazy that it, it's like. I'm not saying we're talking about world's levels numbers here, but it would definitely be a significant spike in viewership because you will also like you're definitely you have a reason to attract the the LEC audience now as well. Like LEC audience usually just watches LCS because it's you know, there's a rerun. It's kind of a convenient time for them. Right. But now. Like you, you take, you know, L LEC's one of their biggest talents. People are going to want to tune into that live broadcast now. 
So, but that swings me back around to the real big topic of the evening. And I know we're, we're kind of an hour and 20 in already, so I'm not going to drift too long on this topic. But I know we talked about it a little bit last week, but this whole contract bloat thing, right? Like, to steal a really old meme here, what really grinds my gears is how this whole offseason has played out as far as contracts go, right? Like, I said it before, I'll say it again. We, we might even talk about this a little bit in next week's show as well. But something seriously has to change in contract land for Riot, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just entirely unfair. And, and, and I know life isn't fair, yada, yada, yada. Neither is, prof- especially not professional sports. But there's got to be something that can be done. Because you don't hear about this kind of shit happening in traditional sports right like you would never hear in in any traditional sport right at the at the major league level of a you know top two top three player not having a team for the upcoming season Like, completely clean, completely healthy player, right? Not having a team for the upcoming season. And we're seeing that, we've seen that at least, what, three, four, five different uh, examples I think we can name off the top of our head here. Um, there's Jensen, there's the there's Mickey situation. Um, Reckless ended up going down to a minor league team. Uh, because of contract problems and not being able to get on a team. Um, I mean, the the thing that I think 2021 is teaching us is we have a fundamental problem in how we are treating our players and, and, and how we are negotiating our contracts with players, right? There is... A, I, I see like two major things, right? One is I don't know if these teams are being accurately dissuaded from pulling the contract shenanigans that they're pulling, right? I mean... Are these players honestly agreeing to like ridiculously low buyouts in their contracts or are these teams actually okay with paying out high buyouts or high severance, you know, conditions in players contracts for them to be able to go pick up the next great talent or frankly what they think is somebody better well i mean again that really depends on the team some teams love to be free wheeling and splash the cash wherever they can others not so much but the other thing is is there a a rule set or some sort of of league level like riot level organization dissuasion device whatever you want to call it to prevent teams from going nuts with this right like i think having you know the fact that we've seen you know several big name players that are you know very talented not have teams for 2022, I think Riot has to be looking at this and they're going to have to step in and do something, right? And the way I figure it, 
and we have talked about this, you know, we did talk about this last week as well, uh, to an extent, but I think there, there's really only a couple of things that riot can really do. Right. One, they expand the league and they add more teams, which we did talk about. We did. <clears throat> um, the other option is riot introduces some sort of, of rule or policy against contract termination or at least excessive contract termination. Right. Like maybe they require teams to set a, a, a severance pay, a severance package of a minimum of half the value of the player's contract or something. Right. Because I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Jensen had a $4.3 million contract. Let's say he only got 10% of that uh, if he's severed, uh, if his contract's bought out, right? And let's go even further and say it's 10% of whatever's remaining. So if he's already played one year under this contract, you, you know, cut 4.3 and a half, that's what 2.15 yes sounds about right yeah yes that's correct so he's got 2.15 million you 10 percent of that is 215 grand mm -hmm. that's a decent chunk of change but for a player that was getting paid, you know, that was expected to make another, you know, 2.15 million plus bonuses. Cause I imagine Jensen has <laughs> bonuses in his player contract. You know, suddenly he's, he's out that right. You know, this actually ties into our conversation last week, as you mentioned, not just about expansion, but salary caps. Yeah. I have an idea of how you could incorporate that. Say, even if you don't have a hard salary cap, say, if you have similar to the NBA, a soft cap and a luxury tax, or even a major league baseball, a luxury tax to where if you spend over this amount of money in salary, you've got to fork over a certain percentage of matching, yada, yada. Now you're wondering how I can combine those two together. Well, if I you, am actually, if you have a luxury tax, similar to a lot of contracts where it's called dead money, the player's not being paid. He's not on your roster, but there's a part of that salary that goes and still contributes to the amount of your salary to determine whether or not you have to pay a luxury tax or how much. What Riot could do, say in the Jensen example, if the buyout is only 10% of that remaining salary on his contract, I mean, I'm using that as an example. I'm, I, again, I'm not that well versed no. in in sports contracts as well, much as I, I would like to be. I get that. But say if that 10% buyout were the case, the other 90% could be treated as dead money. Or at least a large fraction of that dead money that counts against your salary standings, in essence, to determine whether or not you would have to pay that tax. If, however, it's a higher percentage of a buyout, then that's a smaller percentage of dead money. And you could even make it progressive if you wanted to. Okay, I can, I can see where you're going with that. So that way, the players get paid quite well. You still take a hit for buying out of the contract, but you're making it more equitable for everybody. See, the thing that I'm the thing that that I would be aiming if I'm right, the thing that I'm I would be aiming to do, right, is 
eliminate it to where a player isn't just suddenly dropped, doesn't have the opportunity to go to another team, and now they have no income, right? In Jensen's case, 10% of, you know, the remaining $2.15 million contract, that's 215 grand. You can still live comfortably off of 215 grand. But not every player is Jensen. Not every player is pulling a $4 million contract over two years. You may have a player who has a 10% buyout in his contract, but his contract is only worth a hundred grand. And if he's already been paid out, say half of that hundred grand, now you got 50 grand player gets 5k, which so is what, more realistic. So what you could do, have a set minimum buyout, either a dollar amount or percentage, whichever is greater. Right. And that's why I was thinking percentage, because it fairly compensates smaller players, if you will, who legitimately do get their contracts bought out for for more deserve. Well, I don't want to say more deserving, but more talented players. Right. Like there are situations where, OK, maybe I'm re- I'm writing a rookie or I'm writing a, 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 you know, two, three, four year veteran who's, you know, not the great, but there wasn't anything better. And now there's something better, but I still have this guy under contract. Let me treat him fairly, give him, you know, his 50% of whatever he's got left. So he doesn't get screwed over because he may not be able to, you know, his talents or whatever alone may not be enough to make him another, get him another team. So I can get this guy that I really want that's better, but I'm not screwing over the guy that, you know, got me to where I am. And that's why and that's I, kind of what I feel is going on with Jensen. And that's why I say dollar amount or percentage, because as you see with some of those smaller contracts, you get a percentage of what's left. That's next to nothing. But if you can create a floor on that, well, the, I think the easiest floor, right? The easiest one to say is 50% of the total contract. Because a lot of these, because a lot of these teams tend to drop these players halfway through their contracts anyways. So it's, is it, yeah, so, so they, so it forces them to sit there and think, right? It's like, is it really worth it to us financially from a financial aspect to pull in this new player? Are they really that exceedingly incredibly better than the guy that we have? Because if we let the guy that we have go, we have to pay him as if he's playing this entire split for us anyways. Not to mention that also goes into the situation with dead money. 50% 50% of the contract you pay out, the other 50% would go dead money towards the luxury tax. Well, how does that work if they've already paid out that 50% because the player already pl- already played that portion of the contract? All right. So, well, I mean, because well, so you say 50% of the contract from like a two year deal. So Are let's say think- they, so let's say it's a, uh, let's use Jensen in, as an example, right? Okay. So he's a two year, $4.3 million deal. He's already played one year of it. So he's already gotten 2.15 million. Okay. They drop him now under these rules, un, under the 50, under the 50% of the total contract thing, they have to pay him the 2.15 million, which they're paying him if he plays whether or not effectively at this point. Because he's halfway through his contract. If they were doing this at the end of spring, then it's even more fucked for Team Liquid. They're really losing money because not only are they paying, not only have they paid him 75% of his contract, they pay him an extra 25 They're going to pay him an extra 25%. So, but this, him. but this is what I mean. If you're still paying out and paying that two year deal, so. Two point one five million. Yeah, you pay you pay him. The other two point one five million 
would count as dead money towards that next year's luxury tax. Even though it's already been paid out previously. Because again, it's the rest of that contract. Now I'm looking at the span. It wouldn't affect you for say this year because you've paid him out for this year. But next year, since you've already paid him out, you're still sitting on that dead money for the second year. I think I see where you're going with this. Yes. Now, again, for a one-year deal, you wouldn't have to worry about it unless you're buying him out before you fulfill that one-year deal. Then the rest of that is dead money towards the rest of that year. But for a two-year deal, yeah, you've paid him 50% that one year. He's already played the one year, so he got paid for the one year, yeah. So then that second year, he can go somewhere else, but since you signed him to a two-year deal, that second year is dead that's money. In, that's impacting your dead money for the current year that you are that you dropped him. Correct. So... Say for like 2021 and 2022, you pay him out the 2.15 million for 2021. Which he, yeah, he he earned his two point, he earned his two million for 20 for playing 2021. He's going to get paid two million because he's getting dropped going into 2022, which is the second half of his contract. Now, if they're paying him out. That whole 2.1 million, then there would be no dead money. But whatever they were paying less than that 2.15 million, the remainder of that would be dead money counted for 2022. Now you see where I'm getting into. Yeah, I do. But I, I like I said, I think it's you know, I think it would be fair. Because I think it dissuades teams from signing these these really big lucrative contracts if you're forced to pay the player 50% of the total contract, right? It it fairly compensates the smaller players. It does. With, but with, the- with smaller deals. And I think it would effectively dissuade organizations from doing essentially what happened to Jensen, right? But, here, but here's the rub, though. He's being paid that two... He was already paid that $2.15 million. You've got to be very careful in the linguistics of when you're putting out these type of deals. Because if you say 50% of the total contract, technically, they wouldn't owe him a damn thing. Because it's like, okay... We paid you the 50% of your contract, two-year deal. We paid you for the one year. We don't owe you another dime off your bike. So that's why you would have to specify 50% of what's remaining. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be 50% of what's remaining. That's not what I'm, that's what I, that's not what I would be going for. So if you're see, saying see what I'm saying, so 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 here, so well again, continuing to use Jensen as an example, right? Two year, four point three million dollar deal, right? Yes. He gets dropped. He's already played one year, and he's already gotten paid for his one year plus his bonuses for worlds. So then they don't not even they w- not even factoring bonuses into this conversation right now. So then they wouldn't owe him anything. Not not that's not what I'm proposing. No. Ah, but see, you've opened yourself up for a technicality right there. And this is why I say you have to be very careful. See, what I'm saying is, okay, they want to drop him halfway through his contract. That's fine. They have the right to do that. But he has a 50% buyout for the total amount of the contract as it was signed, the day it was signed, regardless of how much has been paid out already. Which means if they want to if they want to sign him and drop him the very next day, he hasn't played a damn thing or anything, he's automatically entitled to two point one five million dollars. Yes. So basically if they if, if 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 he were to play in spring and they drop him in summer, or they drop him between spring and summer, 
He's played 75% of his contract and he's gotten paid for it, but they want to drop him to bring somebody else in. They still have to pay him 50% of the total contract, which is the 2.15 million. So he actually walks away with an extra 25% on top of what he would have technically made if he stayed with the team. Now and that's the kind of rub that I'm trying to introduce in to make teams double t- make teams do a double take on whether or not they should be dropping these players, right? But but even with this, would that stop the freewheeling teams? Yes, I think not- it would. To a point, but as you see with the dead money, and this is why I say with the luxury tax, you know how that luxury tax would work and how it does work across those sports? These big teams pay it. That luxury tax, Riot would then have and go towards the smaller teams. Say, hey, all right, you've got this much extra money in your budget. So that way, if you can go ahead with these players and yada, yada, yada. You would have to have some combination mechanism of both. Oh, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you there. I'm think uh, so, so, uh, I, I had a thought and now it's like it just poofed. It was there and it's gone. <laughs> oh, there it came back. Right. I think just alone, just the fifty percent of the total contract, no ifs, ands, or buts. If they're if they're cut, right? <sighs> I think that is enough to dissuade these teams. Uh, not even including the luxury tax. That's just icing on the cake. But the harder you, the the more expensive that you make it for a team to drop a player is the less likely they are to drop that player because more than likely they are dropping this highly paid player for another player who they are likely going to compensate at equal or greater value. So then if that is the case, you go ahead. And if the, and it's no secret right now because I we talked about this I think about a month ago now, but overall, league teams are kind of strapped for cash right now. So then, what you do in that case, you really hit them with a the double whammy. Fifty percent of the original contract as it was signed, regardless of time played or contract payouts or whatever. And on top of that, 25% would count against the soft cap. So say for Jensen, you would pay him, you pay him his 2.15 million and 1,075,000 of that counts towards a luxury tax threshold. Yeah, for, when, for whenever you drop him. So if they decide to drop him ahead, they drop 20, him like right now for the 2022 season. So that would be almost 1.1 million, counting against your threshold for 2022. I like that. I like that a lot. Because again, it fairly compensates the smaller players who aren't getting these crazy, you know, lucrative luxury deals. Hmm. You know, it prevents them from getting screwed over and, you know, suddenly, crap, I don't have money. You know, I'm I'm in a bad way financially. Yep. And it I properly dissuades these teams from dumping these star players that they're signing, you know, seven figure dollar amount contracts to just to pick up somebody else. And but they're also, going to sign another $7 million amount you know, or seven figure dollar amount to while their first guy is sitting there on the bench with, uh, you know, probably se- a high six figure, maybe low seven figure dollar amount buyout on his contract that no other team reasonably can afford. And this is why I say 
with and the then and, and then just like what happened with Jensen, once everybody's pretty much locked their rosters, team realizes, okay, he's got no prospects. Everybody's locked. We don't want to pay him four point three million dollars to ride the bench, and they buy out his contract for ten percent of that amount. And if, that if he's if Jensen's lucky. Yeah, and that's why I say with the luxury tax, you're not only dissuading the comp people from getting these buyouts, you're heavily dissuading from going ahead and getting into these bidding wars with the seven-figure deals. Because even under like the 10% example, if it was that, I would say, okay, you're buying out you know, 10% of his contract. That remaining 90% of what's left, that's your dead money. So, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm one, I am not against, you know, I, I know it's a thing that happens in baseball. I don't know if it's happened in the NFL or any other major sports. Oh, the, the NFL, they do have the dead money concept, but they have a, no, no, no. no. I, I was going to say the, the, the concept of, we will let you buy this player off of him for a portion of what he normally should go for, and we'll pay the rest. Um, not so much in the NFL. Contracts are structured differently, but that does happen a lot in baseball. Yeah, no, I know baseball. That's a pretty common occurrence for a, a team to effectively pay another team to take somebody off their hands. And yeah, under that I wouldn't extent, I wouldn't be against that occurring in league, right? Yeah. And if something like that happens, whatever part that's remaining that you don't pay out, that is your counter to your dead money for that season. Yeah, so if you so let's say Jensen has a million dollar buyout, right? Mhm. And you tell a team, "Hey, he's got a million dollar buyout, but We'll let you have him for three hundred grand. We'll take care of the other seven hundred grand that he's owed throughout the season. So three hundred grand in you know, as far as the soft cap goes, will count towards the team picking him up. But uh, team liquid would still have seven hundred thousand dollars of 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 ghost money, if you will. Oh, hitting their soft cap because they're still paying that to Jensen, even though he's not on their team. Oh no, under my calculation it would be 300 grand towards that soft cap for whomever picks him up. Yeah. But for Team Liquid, it wouldn't be 700 grand. It would be 1.8 million. Okay, where do you get that number from cuz I'm a little confused on that one. 2.15 million remaining on his contract, what he would have been paid for okay. this year. They're paying three hundred thousand, two point one five minus point three, one point eight five million dollars. That okay? That, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's your dead money. That's counting towards your soft cap. Yeah, they're getting three hundred thousand dollars for him. So yeah, you take that off of the. Yeah, no, that okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then for whatever team would pick him up, three hundred thousand plus whatever you're paying him. That would be in total his hit. Well, well, wouldn't his cap the, hit. the team wouldn't the team that picks him up wouldn't have to pay him anything extra, right? Because they're just literally literally buying his contract from the other team. At so at the end of the day, he still gets his two point one five million dollars for playing. Okay, so if he's still getting that, then yes, a three hundred thousand cap hit for the new team, one point eight five million cap hit. For Team Liquid, that's how it would go. Yeah, no, he wouldn't be getting any extra money unless the organization that's picking him up, you know, decides to say. And this is probably more likely, in all honesty, is they offer and an, like they put an addendum on his contract, probably to enhance his performance bonuses, if anything else is given, like if any concessions are given, right? Right. I think that's the only thing that I could reasonably see a team doing 
um it's like you, you know they'll probably you know amend the contract hey we're paying you know let's say for example FlyQuest picks them up FlyQuest is paying three hundred thousand dollars of your contract the other 1.8 million is being paid for by team liquid your paychecks will come from FlyQuest, but we're getting paid $1.8 million from Team Liquid for you. Yeah. So, yeah. FlyQuest <laughs> would take the $300,000 cap hit, and Team Liquid would take the $1.85 million cap hit for 2022. And we wouldn't figure performance bonuses into salary caps or anything like that because that's again performance bonuses. Yeah, that we're not any... that's not guaranteed money. We're only no as far as the cap goes, we're only base, talking about guaranteed money. Base salaries and guaranteed money only. Correct. Anything incentive laden, that's on you to hit. Yeah. See, Riot, we're giving you a whole bunch of free ideas here. Yeah, like, you know, Riot should hire us, right? You know, you can direct your, your emails to s.garmer at gmail.com. And Sean will make sure that that gets to us. Trust me. Oh, of course. We'll badger him about it repeatedly. Oh, yeah. Um, But, yeah, no, I, I, think so, I, I think something definitely has to be done to prevent this kind of thing from happening. And the more and more that Riot and esports want to be seen as, as credible and taken seriously uh, and exist in the same realm as, you know, traditional physical based sports. Right. Um, for, for lack of a better term, because that's what we've we've called traditional sports on this mm -hmm. podcast in the past. Mm hmm. I, I think Riot has to realize, like they have to 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 address and respond to, uh, frankly, what are major issues like these, right? And if you are, if you're saying, "Oh, this isn't a major issue; it's one person that got screwed over," you're making too big of a deal about this. No, Jensen's just one of the biggest examples we can use right now, but. Again, this happened to Reckless over in the LEC. It happened to Mithy as a coach. Uh, to a lesser extent, it's happening to Cadrill right now. I mean, you know, the whole professional players ending up with nowhere to go. This, this is not, it's not a, you know, limited case thing. We're seeing it happen... A lot more than just, you know, weird one or two off scenarios. And that's where expansion would really help matters. I, I think, honestly, expansion with the salary cap, at, like the system that we just described, I think would be the best move for Riot. I yeah. think it sets them up for long-term stability and success. Exactly. And the thing about with that salary cap you can adjust it year on year. Oh, yeah. Because here's the other thing, right? This is still a franchising system. Yep. So guess what Riot gets if they allow for expansion? Expansion fees. Franchising fees. You know how much it costs to get a... Do you know how much a, a franchise spot costs in the LCS? Five million? <laughs> Funny. If I remember correctly, it was like 10. Okay, so I was only half off. Um, let me see here. Yeah, so when they when they went to um in 2017 when they or 2018, um when they moved to franchising, it was five million dollars up front, and then any team that was not a part of the previous split, the the summer split, had to pay an additional three million bucks. Okay, so I was right with the five million. And yeah, I just you... I just opened I just uh, checked it here because I remember, and, and I I might just be misremembering here, but I thought I saw. Um, 
Oh, yeah. No, I was right. Here we go. In an interview with Yahoo Esports, co-head of Esports at Riot Games, Waylon Roselle at the time, um, announced that there would be a flat buy-in fee of $10 million for selected teams of $5 million paid up front and the rest deferred. Okay. So if so- you were so if you were part of um the league in summer 2017, it was 10 million. If you weren't, it was 13. Jeez. Um so basically anybody there is a and there is a revenue sharing thing as well. Um for the teams. Um, team selected into the LCS enter into a revenue sharing partnership with Riot. League based revenues include media deals, team branded digital goods, sponsorships, and merchandise sales will be shared amongst the teams and Riots. Um, only a portion of revenues that the team makes is added to the revenue pool. Uh, teams are entitled to a 32.5% share of league revenue. Half of the pool will be distributed equally to each organization. The other half is split into allocations based on regular season finish and contribution to viewership and fan engagement. And the minimum salary. Oh, wow, I didn't know this part. Um, or if I did, I certainly forgot it. Uh, minimum salary for LCS pro players is $75,000. Player okay. salaries will also be guaranteed through their contracts, but the total play population will also be guaranteed to earn at least 35% of league revenues. If the player share of league revenue is greater than their combined salaries, the difference will be distributed to the players directly. That last part doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, but it's also, it looks like it was copy pasted from somewhere and they didn't finish the paste. Um, now that extra $3 million, um, was actually pooled together and evenly distributed to the teams that were not selected for a franchising spot in 2018. So feasibly, you're talking 26 million for two new teams. Yeah. That's so if you, yeah, I was going to say, so if you use that $13 million, we're looking between 20 and let's just say for the sake of nice round even numbers, we're looking at 20 to $25 million for two new teams in the LCS. And Riot will more than likely demand all of that up front, too. Because I know that they said that there... I, I remember there being a thing where somebody sold their spot, another person bought it, uh, and part of that was they had to pay the $10 million franchising fee to Riot. Yeah, that would make sense. And with something like that, Say they go ahead and they expand, and your typical roster we've established is about how many players? Uh, a typical roster has is required to have a minimum of six players. Okay, required to have a minimum of six. Six but, players and a coach, yeah. As a so, matter of fact, ha- I'm going to look up the LCS 2022 rules. Because I'm going to say, that's your minimum of six, but you know sometimes <laughs> rosters go a lot deeper. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Well, I found the format changes for LCS 2022. Okay. Off of 
LOL Esports website. I mean, we've talked about it already. Uh, spring and summer splits are both going to be eight week double round robins. Uh, five games played on Saturdays and Sundays. Two weeks each split are super weeks, um, which are going to have an additional five matches on Friday. Um, regular season records will no longer carry over from spring to summer split. Oh, they're getting rid of that. Good. They did this thing for like a year, I want to say, where they, um, if you were nine and zero oh in the spring split at at summer, which has technically always been considered a new season, um, instead of you being zero oh and zero, oh, you actually came in at nine and zero. Oh. So basically, instead of taking the year long aggregate. They're counting each split as a separate tournament, like an Apertura and Clausura. Well, they've always counted each split as a separate tournament. They then decided for a year to do a year-long aggregate, and I don't think it went over very well with anybody. Yeah, I can um, imagine not. And so they're, <coughs> they're getting rid of that. Um. Oh, scouting grounds got canceled for 2022. They're not doing scouting grounds anymore. Well, well, at least uh, again, trying to organize scouting grounds with everything currently going on. Well, they're changing it. They're um, they're completely retweaking how the academy system works. Okay. So, and but... they're effectively creating. Um, an A team, like, you know, how we're going triple A, double A, single A. Yeah. They have effectively made an A league called proving grounds. Ah, gotcha. So yeah, we should probably see, um, we'll, we'll probably see a major team, and then at least a, a an academy team, and then a like a rookie team. Okay, so a nice so basically possibly possibly even actual legitimate development teams. So basically, less like baseball and more like soccer. Actually, I think this is more like ba This is actually more like baseball. Just cut a couple of levels of a divisioning out. Cause I'm thinking if you have like, say like the... your, your, your LCS would be the majors, right? Yes. Your academies would be minors. And then your proving grounds would be either developmental or B what I, you know, take your pick. So that really does sound, if anything, more like, Soccer, because each soccer team you have different levels. Yes, they're more based on ages, but you have all right, your senior team, then you have your academy team, then you have your different levels, almost like your academy teams, but a little bit younger. You see where I'm getting at here? Yeah. Yeah, because they're doing an amateur format. So, yeah, they're effectively creating a legitimate development league. Yeah. So, because the reason why, going back to, like, roster size, so your minimum is six. What would you say an average roster has? Eight, nine? Uh, seven, eight. Yeah, I wouldn't go too crazy. Not a for for North America teams usually stick to six, maybe seven players. They're not like Korea where they'll sub a player for. They'll have a sub for every player in every position. So anywhere between six and then with like Korea, you would have ten. Yeah. Korea, you probably average not higher on the 9 to 10 side, yeah. So, 
a good salary cap, a soft cap, you could easily do in about the four million range. I'm trying to find. Oh, there's the college. Oh yeah, you gotta yeah. There's college in there as well. Um, obviously they aren't affiliated with professional teams, so to speak. Like you know how you, you know, New York Yankees have the the major team, and they've got you know minor teams that are owned or affiliated with the club. Oh yeah, I've actually seen a few years of the college championships on ESPN, where the prize are like college scholarships. Yeah, they've got a. Uh, I see the the. I found the College League of Legends rules for 2022. I'm trying to find the. See if I can find the 2021 ones. All right, I found the 2021. Okay. We can go off of that because I don't think they've released the 2022 ones yet. Which is okay, right? Like there's it's still yeah. off season. Um they'll probably release that once Riot gets back from the holidays because they go on holiday break next week. Yeah, so we'll probably see that after New Year's. Yeah. Um Because with these kind of, yeah, as I was originally going to say, you could set the initial cap at like 5 million, but with roster sizes that small, 4 million would be easier. And then once you get to a certain point, like the first million. Okay, yeah, go, here we go. Uh, maximum and minimum roster size. Each team is required to maintain at all times during the competitive season. A total roster, which includes the LCS and the Academy teams, right? I don't okay. know why they do it this way, but that's how they, they did the rules. Um, of no less than 10 players. All uh, right. And no more than 15, which includes a reserve roster. Okay. So... Basically, you can say for the purposes of um, the cap, right? If you split off Academy, um, yeah, you're probably looking at six to eight team uh, players per team and a coach. So, well, the coach, I don't count as part of the cap. I would have that separate because we're not Australia. Right. Four million dollars. They're gonna have some some teams that are not gonna be very happy with you. <laughs> well, but so but hear me out. The reason why, if it was larger rosters, I would have said five, but four million for the first million after that. So going up to five million. Right, hold, hold, actually, hold on a second. I'm looking at something here. Seventh player requirement. An LCS team is required to maintain a second substitute player, the seventh player in quotation marks in parentheses, on its playoff roster where the team's LCS playoffs roster is comprised of three resident players and three non-resident players. The seventh player requirement is to protect against situations where a resident player becomes unable to play during mid-season uh, showdown or LCS championship and the team would be able unable to fill the roster with its non-resident substitute due to the prohibition of three non-resident players as starters. So yeah, seven to yeah, so six to eight 
is uh, is definitely I would say seven to eight. Okay, so if you're looking at seven to eight, I will be generous. Four and a half million. Okay. The first million after that, so say up to five point five million. Dollar for dollar. Every dollar you pay, that's a dollar on your luxury tax. Anything beyond, say, seven million, two to one. Every dollar over seven million, two dollars in luxury tax. You get up to nine million, anything beyond nine million is three to one. Dollar over nine million. Three dollars in luxury tax. And you can have it float up and down based upon revenues or anything and what have you. That would be my initial cap. Okay. I can I can see that. And again, with however you factor in the buyouts and dead money, that counts. Oh yeah. So if you're only paying out two and a half million in actual base salary, but You've got three million in dead money. All right, your five and a half million. So you're right on the edge of that range. Bam, that's a one million dollar luxury tax. So you can be freewheeling if you want, but it will cost you. Yeah, I I, I could be on board with that 100%. And I think it solves a lot of the problems we saw yep. in this offseason. Yeah. If Riot doesn't want to expand, right, which I think is a, you know, stupid idea, but... If Riot doesn't want to expand, then yes, I think that there needs to become. I think a a, a salary cap needs to be instituted. Mm -hmm. Salary caps and controls or limitations on contract buyouts and cancellations. Yeah. <laughs> and again, as you said, anything with the buyout. Under your system. Because this also guarantees that these players get a buyout as well, right? Because for all we know, these players may not get, may, may not even have buyout options in their contracts if they're let go by the team, right? Like it's very possible these contracts have clauses of, well, we can trade you to another team if they buy out the remainder on your contract, but we can release you without paying you a dime. And that would factor in, you would factor in those releases and things into dead money as well. So if you have a player who's like re flat out released with no buyout, then unless you can show any sort of cause why you're releasing them, the entire remainder of that contract, regardless, dead money. Oh, yeah. You can choose to not pay your players, but do you really want that to be held against you? Yeah, because if you're releasing a, a someone who's got two million left on their deal, you don't arrange any sort of situation. All right, you slap that two million on as dead money. Yeah. Now, if you pay him the two million or whatever. Well, if you pay him the two million, that's also dead money. So no, I if you, you pay, if you pay him the two million, 
that's fine, but that's no dead money going against your cap. Right. Because you're still paying him the $2 million. But, I mean, it's still going against your cap anyways because, yeah. you, you know, it's still your salary cap. Exactly. But... You're still paying him, but you're no, no longer carrying that dead money. You've paid him. It goes against you either way. That's why I say going with the idea with buyout percentages of buying out what's left. You yeah, can't... no, I think you just have to require <coughs> a minimum buyout percentage. Yeah, say rather a... than rather than just you know, because the the a team if you do it the way we were just talking about where you don't require minimum buyout and it's you know dead money that gets held against them, a particularly crappy team can go okay well we're not paying i mean they go okay well it's dead money either way let's just not pay him we save ourselves from having to pay the player we just get hit on the balancing ledger of we have you know two million dollars we can't use for salary um i would add an extra clause if you do that if well, I mean, the way the way that we just explained it, that no. is effectively what, what it is. And I get that. And this is where I would add an extra clause. If you flat out release without cause, then the dead money gets multiplied. So instead of 100%, it's 150%. Oh, yeah. So say if even if you've got a player where you've got two million left on the deal, as we use with the example, you release him without cause, and if Riot can show, hey, it's without cause, fine. That's three million dead money. I don't think it's on Riot to show without cause. I think it's on the. I think you put the uh, the the burden of proof no, on the you, team. You you. I'm not saying you put the burden of proof on riot i am just saying you do put the burden of proof on the team but riot can also come in and say if you have that burden of proof hey that's bullshit oh yeah that's what i'm saying if you go ahead and you try to spin anything and riot says hey you did this without cause that two million dead money becomes three million yeah Or if it's particularly egregious, they could even go and say, nope, whole contract. Yeah. You could say, all right, that's the whole contract that was over with Jensen. If they find that it's egregious enough, that's like, all right, 4.3 million dead money added right on for that year. And And with what they did to Jensen, I would consider that egregious to that point yeah so because that... i think because i honestly believe it was a concerted effort of team liquid to not try to arrange another team to get jensen right yeah they did not they 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 it was pretty well known that bergson was going to become available in the off season right yeah mm-hmm Cloud or uh, Team Liquid had to have been thinking at the very least, okay, we want Bergson if he's available. If that's the case, why didn't they sit down with Jensen and at that point, right, as soon as possible, say, look, we're going after Jensen. We're going to give you permission to talk to other teams. Yeah. So it's not considered poaching you know, just be discreet about it, which let's be honest, discreetness only lasts so long in the LCS yep. with the amount of leaks there are out there, but that's any sport really. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, go see if you can land a, a buyout or another contract. Um, And then, you know, when they pick up Jensen, or when they pick up Bjergsen, it's no shock to Jensen or really anybody. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, you know, Jensen's going over to, you know, cloud nine for, you know, a million, maybe million and a half dollars for one split. 
and you know jensen can come to some sort of you know equitable terms where it's like yeah no i'll agree you guys can get out of this contract because i'm going over to cloud nine they're not paying me the you know the two point whatever i was going to earn with you guys but it's you know decent amount of money yeah and everybody's happy yeah and but that- here no i think this was a concerted effort by team liquid to effectively screw over jensen in the worst way possible right and Mm -hmm. again i don't understand it because jensen is is such a talented player yeah he's been very devotedly loyal to team liquid since they got him from cloud nine back in what was that 2016 2017 something along those lines yeah and and i would gladly consider in like cases with this egregious and the fact that if he is making Now, the reason why I would really reserve going full contract, I would save that if the player isn't making a dime. If the if the player well, we don't we don't know if Jensen got a buyout or not. Yeah, if it's if, if it comes out that Jensen did not get a buyout whatsoever and is making nothing or or the equivalent of nothing right like a couple of grand is if they offered him five grand or ten grand that's not enough to live you know i you can't live six months off of ten grand no so then bam full contract counting against the cap for 2022 i would be fine making that decision because i mean and you can even base that by saying all right if this buyout basically has him at a percentage of the poverty line, no, you will be hit the full contract against your cap. Oh, the poverty line is what? $11,600, I believe. For a year. You would, you would know this because you, you, you do, you know, Rick's TNT LLC. Well, actually with the poverty line and how it's set up and they do percentages, Depending on the number of people in the household, if it's just a one person household, it's like sixteen grand. Um twenty twenty one poverty caught guidelines for the forty eight contiguous states in DC, uh, according to HHS, is twelve thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars for a single person household. Okay. Alaska, it is sixteen thousand ninety, and Hawaii, it's fourteen thousand eight hundred and twenty. So basically, with that twelve thousand, double it. So if their buyout is where you're getting less than twenty five grand, you're hit against the cap, the full contract. Yeah, and I agree with that 1,000%. You don't want to play based out of Alaska with what they pay for internet up there. They have internet in Alaska? They'd be surprised. (laughs) They have a couple of T1 lines, which I'm sure are very expensive to get on. Cost of living in Alaska is insane. That's why everything is adjusted in Alaska. (laughs) Uh, yeah, no, if if you uh, I, I think this this situation is definitely egregious because also yep. you have to I, I think in part of determining the egregiousness, right? You have to look at the caliber of player, right? Oh, yeah. Jensen is a top two mid laner, right? They replaced him for the number one for 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 another top two mid laner. You can definitely argue somewhat successfully if not completely successfully if you're riot in all honesty because you have access to telemetry and data that these teams wish they could get their hands on of course that there are no other mid laners in the lcs that are at the skill expression level and, and it's very important that i use the term skill expression level that Bjergsen or Jensen are at Uh and the fact that you have effectively 
conspired to defraud him by not letting him be on a team. And yes, I know I'm using some very heavy legal jargon there. But the fact that they have conspired to defraud Jensen of being able to join another team and effectively rigging the the league so that they have an easier go at the season because a chief competitor um to their team is not a is a non-factor i can would consider that especially egregious yeah almost almost to the point where it's it's i don't want to call i don't want to say match fixing but well, this wouldn't the, necessarily... The fix is in kind of thing. This, well, this right? wouldn't be specific match fixing. This would go borderline towards collusion. That That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's conspiracy at the very least, right? Yeah, because technically collusion would have to involve Another the team. owners of multiple teams. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, you could definitely say conspiracy. And yes, I would have a public press conference and say, all right, this is what happened. Yeah, we have this evidence. This is what's given based upon these determinations. This is Team Liquid's penalty for the 2022 season. And and honestly, at with with how like obviously i think this is a little bit extreme even on you know our our scale of egregiousness i would say and and i really hope riot is is listening to this and actually does investigate it you know if there if there's a way that we can send this to riot i will gladly do it <laughs> but I, I i think that if you know if if everything that we're saying is true right and this is definitely conspiracy. I think you have to go above and beyond a salary cap hit. Yeah, right? that that would be a start. Like that would just be a start. But I think you would have to. You can't hold it against the players, right? It's not the players' fault. No, maybe Jensen, or sorry, maybe Bjergsen, if if the investigation reveals that you know, the conspiracy, like there's collusion with Jensen and Team Liquid. Like maybe if Jensen says, hey, I will come play, or if Bjergsen says, hey, I will come play with you guys if you can, you know, prevent Jensen from getting another team. Mm -hmm. In that case, yeah, I think you you suspend Bjergsen, right? At like six games at a minimum. Yeah. Maybe eight. Like maybe half the season. I was about to say about because if you're talking a season, it's a double round robin, so eighteen games. So suspend him like that nine, the first nine. Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, and then you definitely hit the team with substantial financial penalty. Oh yeah, they would um, have the money on their cap hit. And additional fines, and potentially any suspensions applicable for people at the top. I'm going to see. I'm looking at um, what they call the penalty index. Okay. Which is effectively the, you did this, here's the penalty. Um, eligibility. Failure to participate in marketing, studio interference. Need one for your pudding? 
So the only thing, honestly, that I can see right now is what they, what they are just a general major misconduct offense, um, which they put as an example, assaulting an opponent, attempting to bribe a referee, etc. I can't really see the only other thing that may uh come under this is conduct unbecoming of an LCS team member. Um but the major misconduct one seems to be it. Um which for the first offense is a twenty five thousand dollar fine and a minimum of a five game suspension. Um and according to the penalty index, aggravating factors may increase a monetary penalty by a maximum of 25%. And aggravating factors currently recognized by league are non-cooperation and deception around an infraction. Um, but there is a caveat in here as well, thankfully. Um, that says for particularly egregious conduct, the league reserves the right to review the infraction and enforce penalties in excess of this penalty index. So at a minimum, you're looking at $25,000 fine and a five game suspension um, for a player. Um, so yeah, had Do to I step think... away. Hmm. Oh, okay. So I found, I just said it, but I'll say it again. Um, the only real thing that I can see in the penalty index, right. Um, is ma a major misconduct penalty. Okay. Uh, which is a $25,000 fine and a minimum five game suspension for the first offense. Um, aggravating factors may increase a monetary penalty by a maximum of 25%. And the only aggravating factors currently recognized by the league are non-cooperation and deception around an infraction. Uh, but there's also another caveat at list that says for particularly egregious conduct, the league reserves the right to review the infraction and enforce penalties in excess of this penalty index. So basically, then, yeah, they could go ahead and slap on that half a split suspension and oh, yeah. heavier, heavier fines. That's within their purview. And I have yeah. to step away one last time. So, yeah, no, if somebody, if anybody out there in Riot Land is listening, uh, I really hope y'all are investigating this because something just doesn't sit right. Like, I, I legitimately think there was some collusion here to prevent Jensen from being on a team next split. It just seems too perfect, right? They pick up Bjergsen, the only major skill competitor to Jensen, they leave Jensen on the bench um, and everybody's saying, oh, well, the buyout the Team Liquid had for him was too high. We can't afford it. We know he had a $4 million two-year contract that he's already gotten half of. And then he gets 
I don't want to say unceremoniously shit canned, but he definitely got shit canned. Um, so yeah, no, definitely hoping, you know, something comes out of this, right? But we will we'll see what happens. Um, as far as next week goes, uh, next week is our last episode of the year. Yay. Uh, yes, we are taking the uh, week of New Year's off. Um, because that is just way too close. Um, so yes, we will be back next Monday, the 20th, the week of Christmas. That's, that's far enough out that we can feel, we feel comfortable doing a show, but we are definitely taking the last week of the year off. Um, you may have to start late because I got a thing possibly more on that later. Wait, what? Uh, time as usual on Monday is subject to change. Um, we try to, you know, it's sometime in the evening. Evening is, uh, at your discretion to define, but, um, I think that's going to cover it for this week though. I, I don't really think anything else we can, we can really cover unless you have some final thoughts about this whole you know, Jensen mess and, you know, contracts and all that. Cause I know you had to step away for a second there. Salary cap, salary cap, and maybe expansion as well. I would love to see both, honestly. So, like, and you, and you could honestly implement both. Like, just like we were saying for how you would reformat worlds in 2023. If you can pull off this expansion and instituting a cap 2023 or 2024, doable. Entirely yeah. doable. Agreed. 100% agreed. But, um, yeah, I was just telling folks while you stepped away, you know, last episode of the year is next week. We're taking New Year's week off. So uh, if you want to finish taking us on out of here, I think that's going to be it. Okay, so that be three hour mark again. Before I do that, there was something that was subject to change because I heard the other attempted to. Oh, we can voice. we can we can talk about that off air. All right. Well, for those of you who happen to catch us live on Facebook at W2M Network, twitch.tv slash W2M Net. Thank you. Twitter. We still don't know what's going on, but you should usually catch us there. Twitter.com slash W2M Network. And as other podcasts are usually going up, I might be pulling double duty tonight, but that's fine, especially since it's early. This will also be up on YouTube, YouTube.com slash W2M Network. Subscribe, ring the bell, so you'll always know when we have new material up because we've got it all the time of uh, for myself for ryan you can find him on twitter at the invasion myself at squid sports head and for those of you who are brave enough to take our podcasts orally good luck swallowing all this material you can find us on stitch or spreak or podbean castbox overcast spotify iHeartRadio, Google Pods, Apple Pods, if you name it, most likely we are on it. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, uh, and by the way, because we we haven't done it at all this week, we it, it's kind of hard to tie it in, but uh, it is kind of the running gag um, of, of the network in general. Uh, hashtag bet on Bavada, obey local gambling laws. 21 means 21, damn it. Well, I mean, honestly, there hasn't been a whole bunch of stuff to be able to bet on when it comes to things like this. 
There, yeah, no, there's, there, we're we're not in competitive. Like, there's no this the league doesn't start for still another almost two months. So, well, but I mean, as soon as the rest of rosters lock and everything, and we got stuff squared away, then you can get in your futures bets. Well, I mean, rosters is pretty much locked. So yeah, I think you can you can probably start putting your futures bets in. Um. For, for those places that are accepting futures bets now. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's it. That's all she wrote. I don't want to go for three hours. I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> I want to go get food. Uh, so this has been another episode of League to the Max or whatever uh, here on the W2M Network. Uh, for myself, uh, I'm Brian Andesian Espinosa and my friend here. Your friend and mine, Eric Squid Sports Head Watkins. Thanks for listening. We'll see y'all next week.